It looks like it's going to be a cracking day. With some visor on. Someone asked yesterday why I washed the cap. Well, because there's the drink. You get residue inside the cap. That's why we wash the cap. Rattling off with a fast track. Up to Jonathan's. Don't forget, he's got three daughters. Check them out on Instagram. Putting the time-lapse camera on the uh, speaker was not a good idea. Try it up there now, see if that works. I don't know why it's saying that. It sometimes does that in the morning, so I'll have a quick look at the, uh, the sensor and see what it's doing. I can hear it clicking. Clean a sponge and put it back in. This is cinematic mode, so it's kind of like just focusing on me and nothing behind me. Don't know whether I like it or not. Still saying no data despite me cleaning the sponge. We'll set off and see what happens, but it's been doing this for uh, the last few days. This is Phil of Barley spread fertilizer on a few weeks ago, and I'm going to blame Tom Pemberton for these stripes because he rang me up when I was doing it and I forgot to turn the headland spread on. So if you look, there's a yellow stripe there, and there's a yellow stripe over there, which is the 60, 72 meters apart. Because as I came up that side there, it was spreading short this way, and then as I came down here, it was spreading short that way. That's why we've ended up with that yellow stripe, and then the same the other way. As I went up there, it was spreading short, and as I went back, it was spreading short. So there you go, it just shows you the, how useful the fertilizer is. You might see better when I turn at the end, I'll have to show you. I'm not sure you can really, but obviously there's a yellow stripe, just sort of, where are we? Sort of there, and then there's another one, sort of there. Can you zoom out, can you see it or not? Not really. No. The good these phones were just certain colours they don't sort of pick up. I'm putting a little bit of manganese on, which is a micronutrient, some other micronutrients that smell like molasses, and something that will kill hopefully some of the grass weeds in the barley. But it's barley is so closely related to, to grass, it's a bit tricky, so it might not take them all out, but hopefully it should stop them nicking the nutrition that we're putting on. It's a bit random. Fox out in the daylight, big black one. I think this is my favourite field of barley, but I'll show you why I'm in here spraying. Just look on the edge. We've got grass weeds. You can you see how you can't see the rows of barley? That's because there's grass growing between them. So hopefully this spray might take some of them out, but it isn't easy to control grass in barley. But what happens is, if you imagine it grows in the bottom of the hedgerows. And, and then it just sort of like creeps in the field where the seeds get blown in or the combine goes along, cuts it there, comes through the back of the machine and then spreads it out. If you look, it's actually, it's nearly where the row of straw would be. It gets, it gets a bit weedier. So we always try and sort of get that to germinate and kill it off before we start, but there's always a bit that survives. We try and keep it, the seeds in the top surface so that we get them to chip straight away. If you bury them too deep, they come up in the spring when we don't want them, but that's pretty clean the rest of the field anyway. Not sure whether you can hear that clicking. Oh, put your phone underneath. See? Put your hand under it. Well, if we go around the other side, that other one's still acting up. Run. How oh, good that's looked. Cracking day as well. This one here. Only a faint click coming out of it. I put my hand under it, nothing's happening. Unless you like really sort of shake it, so I think the sensor in there is acting up. Better ring bait than to post me one. There's Chester there with Mummy checking the dog field. He's loving the sunshine. In the sprayer. Hey, he's realised it's me.
Dad's going to go out with the 1690 on the power hour and uh, work some ground for potatoes and some for some wildflowers. It's like a throwback for 25 years. There he goes, that should keep him busy for the day. Andrew's got the claim on the 936, ready for drilling beans. Just setting it up on the right spool valves. It's back, and now it's warm, there's no smoke out of it really. The noise of the digger going down the yard. Just trying to get this lined up now where we direct drill with the course so that we start in the right place. This is the one for doing the trial on. So we've got sumoed and horsed, horsed straight in, claydened, and then we'll have claydened onto sumo in as well. There we go, how simple is that? Drop it in, cuts the slot, puts the beans in, paddle balls back it down. Not a lot of fuel. But it's bundled a load of long stubble up and muck. So we'll have to take some aggression off the paddle boards. If you turn this now, it twists that tube, which then lifts these up because they're pivoted off it. And then we should get a bit less tension on them, we should let the trash out. There you go. Try that now. Blowing through it now, just holding a little bit there, maybe. A bit there as well. It was a big lump. There it comes. Camera's still on the front as well. Front side, cutting the slot, putting the seat in, paddles, patting it back down. Doing a bad job. Here though, we have got the odd bean on top, just in the middle. I think we might need to put the middle wheels down ever so slightly. Sorry, not down, up. So we'll put the wheels up, which will put the drill ever so slightly deeper. I'm glad I've got my hat on. I burnt my face yesterday, it was bright red, so that's why I've got it on today because it's bright sun. Actually, didn't need the wheels adjusting, it was just wasn't quite all the way down on the depth from the linkage of the tractor, so that's better now. Got this fly tipping in the corner of this field, we're just about to drill. This has been lightly dissed. We're gonna shove it up and uh, put a match to it because I'm not paying for skip and it's mostly wood anyway with like one piece of plastic. There we go, it's burning away nicely now. I bought this bag lifter down with me as well as the bucket for doing the fly tipping. But I've put it on from the other direction and I've got it against the hedge, so I'm just lifting it off like this. Putting another bag in now. Brilliant blue skies. I've not burnt my face today, I've actually burnt my neck. So I've turned that around. Anyway, Andrew's loving that drill because it's so simple because you just lift it up and down and it works. I'm just gonna get this block finished off now and if we get the chance, it looked hopefully we're gonna try and get to John Bounds has got a dino day tomorrow raising money for charity. So we're going to shoot there in the morning with the 1455 and see what it sounds like on the dynamometer and see how many horsepower it is. 
See that hedge there, it's massive. I remember planting that about 10 years ago. Little tiny whips and now look at them. The top surface of this field was quite compacted. So we just dissed it about an inch deep, sort of inch and a half. And now it's got a lovely seed bed. The beans, they don't like the soil too tight. So hopefully a bit of heat in it as well, because, because we've sort of got it black, if you will, it's not covered by straw. This seed heat now will warm the soil really quick and they should grow straight away. The quicker they get growing, the better. And then that way then, We'll capture all the moisture that we're going to get and they won't be harvested too late either. Bit of a problem with the drill. There's one of the pipes that's got like a, a dip in it and the airflow is going over the top of the beans causing the pipe to keep blocking because they're so big the beans. So I'm just going to try and see if we can cable tie them up a bit better and put some tape around them and get them all sort of in a straight line, not having a, having a hump. Yeah, it's one of these two pipes here, keeps dipping. I need some string and there's some wrap around that wheel. Here we go, that string's down there now. I need to wash this, it's got an oil leak on that ramp, but we're not using it anyway. Uh, it's just that fitting, actually. So now the pipes won't dip. Do it on the floor, Andrew! I'm just gonna turn the metering unit on for a split second. Then we're gonna make sure all the seed comes out. And count it on the floor. We should have 19 piles of seed. Blowing it out of half an hour. There we go. These are falling out there now, see. Really lifts up. Drives forwards a bit. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have nine on the front row. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Cable's been dangling down for ages, annoying me. Anyway, we want to back this load of straw in. So Rob's cable tying it up now to the dumping underneath. Mini Merlot doing an, ep an epic job at it. Just come in quick, got a Zoom meeting now about all the aid and how we're getting it out there. How we're going to pay for the trucks, where we're going to store more of it, and where we're going to go forwards when people need to start filling the grain sheds. So I'm going to get on Zoom now to get the stuff transshipped to Ukraine. That, that's their piece. So we just had a Zoom meeting now with Anna, who's from the Polish charity that's been collecting all this stuff and sorting it all out and getting out there. There's 38 trucks already gone out there. Looking now, obviously people have got it in barns like me and so someone thinks you it's got some in the spud store. You need to get them empty, ready for harvest, but also this is going to flow constantly going out there. So she's managed to find a, a warehouse in Wrexham that we can start taking stuff to once the farms need to be are empty and everything's out there. And then we're just trying to sort out now funding trucks to keep it rolling. So a couple of trucks a week can be leaving, going out there until, until it's the end. Now, if the conflict ended today, the aid would be different. We might need shovels and spades and tools to rebuild. So it's going to be a long going thing anyway. Dharma are going to kindly pay for a warehouse in Wrexham for a year to get us going so that's that's amazing and we're just going to see what we can sort out over the next sort of like few months how it evolves and just keep getting this stuff moving out there so this will be going soon I think the batteries and the blankets quite soon and then just all this other stuff will be sorted and that'll be on its way as well don't they say dust in March is worth a king's ransom is it in like a lying out like a lamb march nearly the end you know this field is pretty much done he's just got that little corner there to do this is where we've been loading here but with that claim he can just run back over it again Look at that sun wow he can just run over this take these wheelings out and then we might roll it we might not possibly not that is mainly because the rollers aren't fixed yet the ram went away and we twisted the end cap so they've having to like completely rebuild it so we'll have it back on Monday, but I don't know whether I'll roll. I, I don't think I need to, to be honest. I think we've buried him well enough. Um, 
it's just if we want to consolidate some of the moisture in but we can't really do that because it'll have dried out by monday you see how it's sort of black there where it's been worked well if we as soon as that grayed off we could have rolled it and trapped that moisture in but by monday that it'll all look gray like the rest of the field it was sown a few hours before that and we've, we've, we've it's we've lost it it's escaped there is some rain forecast next week though but yeah this time of year we're keeping moisture in in the, in the autumn when we're rolling we're trying to stop the slugs going eating stuff but slugs don't really eat beans well that's not a bad result just a bit of rubble left now so far the birthday bumper has raised 102 pound which is amazing in two days 102 pound of free money to the air ambulance so this is today's birthday bumper david morris ian somerville andrew creasy and laura agnes and then the shaw family have donated 10 pound so i don't know whether it's one of your someone that you know is his birthday or a relative or you've just donated 10 pounds to the air ambulance but anyway thanks for that and thanks to everyone that's just had the patience to watch this but just think by watching this you're helping raise money for the air ambulance i missed two off so mike hardman and stacy massey they're on now zoomies in the workshop <laughs> Black Beauty's back. Luke, stop, stop! Dog. He's excited because I've just been playing football with him. 14.55 is it. We are going to take it tomorrow morning. We're going to try and get there at 10 o'clock if we can to John Bounds' charity Dino Day and we're going to dino this. We're going to take it with the old exhaust because it sounds the best. So today's quiz question is how many horsepower will it be at the PTO? Leave a comment if you th and have a guess at it. It's supposed to be, I think, 145, so have a guess. Has it lost any? Has it gained any? Has it been turned up in the past? Who knows? Anyway, we're trying to get there. we'll try and get there in the morning. Have a play on the dyno with that. Sam might take his 7, 6, 10. I'm not sure. We can fit both on the low loader anyway because we don't want to drive and it's too slow. And then we'll get back and we'll get some more sewing and more spraying done. Thanks to everyone that's watching today. Don't forget, if you want to be on a birthday bumper, click the link below this video because that tells you the instructions of where to leave the name if you do do a donation tell me the name because i need to know who it is there's a dumper going out i'm sorry i mean the 7610 sounds a little bit like a dumper sometimes don't you think anyway thanks for watching i've just upset all the ford fans haven't i thanks for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow